Hi, I'm Wendy Weiner. I'm a registered nurse first assistant in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, my specialty is gynecologic laparoscopy. I'm here today to talk to you about a very, very serious matter. It's the risk and the potential risk of smoke in the operating room. Why is it that when you go to a restaurant or go to a public uh, facility, you, the signs say no smoking, but when you're in the operating room of every surgery center and hospital in America, there is smoke in the operating room? Most people don't realize this, and they don't realize that these, these hazards are really no longer potential hazards. They are definite hazards. And we are now analyzing the contents of the smoke. This is not a new problem. This is something that was first looked at back in 1975 and 1976. But unfortunately, nothing has been done about it. And fortunately, Association of Operating Room Nurses has done several studies in this area and have been the strong advocates to encourage NIOSH and OSHA Joint Commission and other groups to really look at what is in this smoke. And these studies have shown, not just now, but even studies in the past, that a lot of this material is potentially, potentially carcinogenic and has materials in it that you would definitely not want to inhale. It can cause you, as an adult, to have asthma, to develop asthma, even if you've never had asthma before in your life. It can cause you to have frequent bronchitis, bronchial infections, and possibly even worse. We're not sure of this, but we know that there have been biopsies of people's bronchial bronchus that have shown uh, the DNA compared to the same DNA that was in smoke that had been evacuated. But what we're really, really concerned of, concerned about, even in addition to all of these things, is that since you're inhaling, all of us are inhaling on a regular basis carcinogenic material, is it possible that this material could cause lung cancer or some type of cancer in the bronchial tubes? In any event, we know, though, for sure that inhaling smoke is not a good thing. Nowhere out there do you ever see a sign that says smoke, inhaling smoke is good for your health. Uh, Association of Operating Room Nurses has now formed a group which is focused on the environment in the operating room. And we are going to look at all of these um, these areas and this we are in the past we've looked at these areas but this time we need to take action and my hope is that Joint Commission at some point in the very near future will actually require every operating room in America to use smoke evacuation whether it be suction itself whether the ventilation needs to be changed whether different surgical masks need to be made, made so that the 40 nanometers material um, can actually uh, keep from going through a person's mask. I don't know if that's possible, but right now the most efficient math, mask out there will filter up to 0.1 microns, down to 0.1 microns of particles. But the problem is that these particles may be as small as 40 nanometers. In addition, there are all types, of, all types of filters being made. And no matter what is being made, none of these things will be useful unless all healthcare providers, nurses, surgeons, techs, everybody in the operating room use these things. And right now, there are operating rooms that have these things, but they're not using it. Every operating room in the world has some type of electrosurgery unit or a laser or saws or drills. All of these things um, cause heat and in turn cause smoke. And 
uh, it's necessary for hemostasis of the patient, but what we need to focus on is how can we protect our health care providers so their lives are not endangered. In addition, um, we don't want to not mention, the, of course, the patient, um, and that's another thing that we're looking at. Of course, patients are not exposed to this on a daily basis, but even when the patient has a procedure, the question is, what effect does that have on the patient's tissues, on their blood? Does it cause the patient to have hypoxia? Does it cause a false reading in their um, pulse ox value? So these are all things that need to be looked at and are being addressed as we speak. And we think, first off, though, it's so important for all health care providers to be very cognizant of this and to please, please use any um, devices your facility has for smoke evacuation. And if your facility does not have that, please talk to your OR director and the other people in your facility to make sure that you start evacuating the smoke in the operating room so that healthcare providers can be protected. Thank you very much.